Welcome to The Matchmaker with Letitia Underwood. I am The Matchmaker with Letitia Underwood. I'm a certified professional matchmaker, dating specialist, and author of the newly released A Do's and Don'ts Guide to a Successful First Date. Um, so today we're going to be discussing what a high value man actually is. I know there's been a lot of conversation still around it. There's a lot of confusion um, with the unfortunate passing of Kevin Samuels. He was the first one to start really discussing in the Manosphere YouTube spaces what a high value man is. As a matchmaker, it's something that I've always um, had to utilize in order to categorize my uh, clients, my male clients. And I've always considered these men of higher value because of who they are, how they are, um, it puts them at a unique position to where they can date mostly every woman that they desire. Like no woman is going to turn them down. So they have the highest value to offer a woman. Not to say that other men don't have any value, but these men offer the highest value. That being said, let's get into it. Okay, for the purpose of my channel, I am only going to be discussing high value men High value men in the top 5%, that is starting at $193,000 a year in the United States. Um, so what is a high value man? What qualifies a man as a high value man? Um, he would be, he would have a network of other top 5% men, meaning he's not the only one in his social group, in, in his circle. Um, he has a group made up of other men who are at that level, whether they have um, less money or more money, right? But he has other men in his social group. He's not the only one. He is useful to the group, meaning he has a purpose within the group. He offers his expertise, his advice, his resources, whatever is necessary um, or whatever the group needs, he is useful to them. Um, he is influential in his community and society. There are a lot of men who are high earners, but they lack the influence. They probably have great social circles, but they lack the influence, meaning he is either a philanthropist, um, he is involved in community service, he is part of a uh, organization that promotes philanthropy and community service. Um, he is he may also be influential to society at large, not just within his community, but society at large. You have a lot of um, high value men who are extremely influential uh, around the globe, in the country and around the globe, namely uh, Rob Johnson, former owner of BET. You have um, Jay-Z, you have uh, Kanye West, um, and there are plethora of other men who aren't famous per se, but they are very influential within society. They're the movers and the shakers and they get things done and make things happen. They are also, these men are also ambitious, driven and focused. Ladies, that is something that you need to understand. Not every man that you desire, not every man that you like, even though you may consider him to have value, without these uh, qualifications, these, these qualifications, these attributes, he's not likely to be high value, but that doesn't mean he's not a good man. But for the purpose of this channel, I only am going to focus on high value men because that's what women really want. So he is going to be ambitious, driven, and focused. That is why he is in the top 5% of individual income earners. He has a purpose. Usually his purpose is established very early on for him. He focuses on his goals. And he carries them out, even at in, in a man in his 20s. A high value man doesn't become just automatically becomes a high value man one day. No, he grows into that over time and it starts in his formative years. In his teen years, you will see this man being focused and driven, driven and, and ambitious in school. He will be a man who is getting good grades, seeking out honors, National Honor Society. Same thing in college. He is focused on his schoolwork. He is focused on gaining um, honors while he's in school. Uh, goal of magnum cum laude, summa cum laude, uh, things of that, of that nature. Um, and then 
he puts himself, he sets himself on the path of his goal very early on. Um, so that by the time he gets to a certain age, he is well established. He is already set in. Um, so if you're coming across, if you're a younger lady, if you're under 35 and you're coming across younger men and you see how focused and driven that they are in their ambition, um, you would do well to nurture that and show patience towards that. He takes care of himself. High value men love to take care of themselves, their hygiene, they're groomed very well. They um, look after themselves. When you see a high value man, when you see a man who is who is very confident in himself, a man who walks tall, um, he looks good, he's put together well, that is a high value man. Um, unfortunately, a lot of men have a lot of high earners don't necessarily fit into that category, but that doesn't mean that they're not still good men. They're just not high value men. And I'm, I'm having this, uh, having this, doing this recording because I want people to really understand there's a difference. There's a difference between a high earner and a high value man. And this is the criteria. This is how they look. So there's no more confusion. He has high self-esteem. High self-esteem is important because he understands he can't get it from anyone else. He gets it from himself and he works on himself in order to uh, establish himself within society. So he has high self-esteem. He is bold. Um, high value men are not meek. They're not followers, um, except when there is a time and place for it. Um, but they're bold. They're bold. They're going to make bold decisions. They're going to have bold conversations. They're not going to shy away from things. They take risks. They didn't get to where they are if they decided to sit on the sidelines and not take the risks. They take the risks. They have taken risks all their lives. They've taken risks in their field of uh, study, in high school, uh, um, college. They've taken the. They've taken a risk on basically focusing on their purpose and their goals rather than uh, being out here and having fun and um, being the cool one. Nope, they took a risk in their uh, in. Um, putting their social life on the back burner so that they can get to where they want to go. I'm not saying all high value men have done that because there were some who were screw ups in high school, screw ups in college. They either dropped out or didn't go to college and yet they're still high value. But I'm just trying to get the younger women to see that this is how you can have distinction for a high value man or a man who will soon be high value in his formative years. So they take risks. They take risks. Um, the most people will not take, and that's why they are the top earners, because they've taken a risk with their lives and their with their careers, with their livelihood and their careers, in order to get to the top. They are accountable and responsible. This is one that I really love, and I think women would do well to focus on. They are accountable and responsible, meaning they understand the role they play, not just in their personal lives, but within society, within their community and society. And so they hold themselves accountable and responsible. You are not going to see high value men out here dropping their seed off in every woman. They're just not going to do that. You're not going to see high value men out here being reckless. Um, although they're risk takers, they're not going to be reckless, right? They're intelligent and they use their, they use their brain for their purpose and their goal. And if it's not going to work in their favor, they're not going to, they're not likely to do something. But if something goes wrong, they take accountability. They understand the buck stops with them. Uh, President Obama was very, fam uh, became very famously said when they were uh, discussing the health care bill, the buck stops with me. And so therefore, um, he established himself as the uh, one who is taking responsibility for anything that should go wrong, even if he's not the cause of it. They are disciplined. Speaking on dropping their seed. They're not dropping their seed off and every woman and being reckless in that manner, in that regard, having all these issues with these women. Because when you're in that lifestyle, you're at that, you're in that social economic class and social circles, everything you do affects the people around you. So they tend to be very disciplined. They're not, you're not going to see them with loads of baby mamas everywhere. Uh, women acting re reckless and crazy. 
um, them putting themselves, them getting themselves outed, although sometimes it happens when they mess with the wrong woman. Um, but for the most part, when he has a family, he's going to be very disciplined. Now, I'm not saying that they won't have a mistress or they won't have a side piece, but they're going to be very, very, very disciplined. Okay. Also, I am not talking about, um, I'm not talking about uh, celebrities and entertainers. They are in a whole different world. Um, this is simply for men who are likely to be, they're likely to be in high, po high powered white collar positions. And they are um, CEOs or entrepreneurs, right? Business owners and entrepreneurs. So, so who exactly are high value men? What type of fields and careers do they have? What type of profession are they in, right? What type of career do they have? They are doctors, whether PhD or MD. You will find them highly concentrated in corporate America as well. Financial professions, their finance guys, CPAs, accountants. Now that we know what type of careers and professions these men have, let's now discuss the interests and hobbies they're in. They're not just going to be philanthropists, but they are going to have interests and hobbies. Um, they like to vacation when they can. Um, they like to have a full, well-rounded life. So they're going to, you're going to see them involved in a lot of things. You're not going to see a high value man just stuck in a house all the time, every day. Even the ones who are making money, I'm not saying that they like to be out in the streets and um, prowling. Um, but you're not going to see them in bars. If you're, you'll see them in maybe a cigar lounge or a lounge that's catered to gentlemen. Social clubs, private elite social clubs, you'll see them there. So, ladies, if you are trying to attract a high value man, um, all of the information that you were told I'm telling you is completely wrong. As a certified matchmaker for men in the top five to one percent of individual income earners. That means my clients are high six figure, seven and eight figure men. Um, and you're not going to find them at the bar. You go into a bar and sitting at the bar, you um, going to your local uh, fair or something, you're not going to see them. You really have to be proactive in getting out there and meeting one. Um, so it's, it, it's imperative to know and understand the things they like to do. So going to a charity event, a gala, um, a, uh, a community, a high profile community event where they are with that is being sponsored by such men or such corporations, you're likely to find them there. Okay, so what are other places that you can find them because of what they do? These men love to play golf. Lots of deals are made on the golf course. Lots of networking happens on the golf course. So ladies, it's time to get your uh, golf gear together and head to the elite golf courses, not the little local uh, golf courses, but golf courses that are mostly connected to country clubs or their elite public golf courses. That's where you'll find these men. Okay, not only are they into golfing, but they also are into art, big game hunting, ballroom dancing, skiing, yachting, race car driving, collecting antiques. Um, so they're well-rounded in their activities and their interests. And they take these things very, very, very seriously. And they have, they spend a lot of time uh, with their activities and their hobbies and their interests because they have the money to do so. So you're not going to find them again. You're not going to find them typically at a bowling alley. Um, you're not going to find them at a club. You're not going to find them just hanging out somewhere. These men tend to be very elite and they are engaging in elite sports and activities and interests. Um, so again, while a lot of men have value, not every man can be high value. And the purpose of this video was to point out how they are set apart. Um, it's not meant to uh, shame anyone or judge anyone, but I understand that women want men at the top, right? When most women go for men in the top 20%, my channel is geared towards the women who are going after, who desire men 
in the top 5% of individual income earners. So with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching and until next time.